Kara ni yung tao ang nagiging kawal Mga magsisaka na karitong tangan Mga manggagawa na walang sandata kundi ang bisig lamang Mga taong apin, mga taong duka Mga kulang palad at mga kawawa Kawaning maliit, sudyante at walang hanap buhay Gayong walang yaman, sukat ipagtanggol Walang bagari ni sino ang bubong Ay buklod, kumilos, nagandang masawi Sa pagsasanggalang sa sariling bayan Ang natipong lakas, naging kabuhan Ang dati ay wala Manding ay naggaling sa kailalim ng matabang at nagling nagangkin ng kalo at buhay na kahanganan. Edgar Mirasol Hopson was shot to death by operatives of the Philippine Constabulary on September 20, 1982 in Davao City. Former student leader and alleged of the Communist Party of the Philippines in Danao, Edgar Hopson was killed by military troopers during a raid. It was the eve of the 10th anniversary of the proclamation of martial law by then President Ferdinand Marcos and barely 10 days after Edgar observed his 34th birthday. He was one of those fine sons and daughters of this country who were martyred during those 14 long and dark years of the past dictatorship. Minsan nag-aaral ganyan, nagpapahatid ng mga inumin sa kwarto niya, tinatanong ako kung bakit kailangan magpakatulong ako dito sa kanila. Yun ang sagot ko naman sa kanya, kasi kami mahirap dahil uh, wala kaming mga ganong paghahanap buhayan sa probinsya. Ngayon, tinanong niya kung bakit kami mga, bakit wala ba kayong mga lupa doon. Sabi ko, sa mayroon, kaya lang ako mga bundok, mahirap, naghihintay lang kami nga ako ng ulan, parang lang mataniman yung mga lupain namin. Ngayon ang sagot sa akin, habi niya, hayan mo siya ning balang araw. Tutuklasin ko lahat mga yan, parang mataniman yung lahat mga yan, sabi niya. I think Ed was about 12 years old when he happened to ask Yanning about the condition on in their province. He had, a, he had great sympathies and uh, concern with the less fortunate. Edgar Hobson, or Ed Job to his friends, grew up in an environment of relative affluence at that time. But his dreams were simple, to study hard and hopefully take care of the business that his parents started. But he was not a simple student. Ed Job became president of the Ateneo de Manila University Student Council. He was elected twice as president of the National Union of Students of the Philippines, or NUSP. He graduated from Ateneo as cum laude in management engineering, and received a gold medal for leadership. And he was the symbol of, uh, of the moderates or whatever it was. You know, by the end of 71 or 72, they were calling themselves the democratic left. Okay. But he was a symbol and he was the, to speak of, he was the youth, uh, the symbol of the youth that was acceptable to the, to the established order. Why he turned away against this was, the only way I can explain it is that basic intellectual honesty. The 1970s was an extraordinary era. It brought out the best of our people, especially among the youth and students. Edjop emerged as a student of national stature during the first quarter storm, the first three months of the opening year of a new decade.
country was uh, in a mess before the outbreak of the first quarter storm. Marcos uh, had engaged in wanton spending of public funds to get himself elected and uh, he had the tendency to make use of the armed forces and the police to suppress the mass movement, especially the youth movement. I come from Asia, which other people may call another world. But I feel at home in your midst. Journalist Jose Lacaba wrote of that period, quote, the government was inextricably in debt, inflation was rampant, and the peso allowed to float promptly sank. The minimum wage went up by a couple of pesos, which came to nothing in the face of higher prices and increasing unemployment. No money could be spared for public schools, but billions were fed into the jaws of the insatiable military beast. While Filipinos got shot at like wild boars on U.S. military bases, a civic action contingent was dispatched to support the American war in Vietnam. From Capas to Taft Avenue to Mindanao, massacres had become a common occurrence. To still the growing discontent, the people were given fashion shows, beauty contests, and offered a constitutional convention." Unquote. While I was the student council president of De La Salle, he was the council president in Ateneo at that time. And we also worked together in the NUSP, the National Union of Students of the Philippines, an organization in which he became the president. We worked together in the January 26, 1970 demonstration. At that time, the issue was the question of the Constitutional Convention, or what we called then the Nonpartisan Constitutional Convention. At that time in the NUSP, there was a divergence as to how to view the role of the Constitutional Convention. Edge of at that time, sincere in seeking social change, thought that the Constitutional Convention could be used as a peaceful means of changing Philippine society. At that point, some of us uh, did not agree with this analysis. We thought that the Constitutional Convention would be used by those in power to thwart the people's will and instead of achieving social change, would be used to preserve the status quo. Because of this, the NUSP developed what is known as a right wing and a left wing. EJOP nonetheless organized the demonstration of January 26. And as it is now history, what happened to that demonstration. Several days after that, there was a meeting in Malacanang. The president at that time, Ferdinand Marcos, had a discussion with the student leaders from the NUS. I remember at that time that Ejop stood up and demanded that Marcos write down in paper a promise that he would not run for a third term. Marcos, of course, declined to do so and got angry. And of course, we know that th the episode in which he called Edge of this, this son of a grocer, he said, what right do you have to demand such a thing from me? Outside the palace, the more militant student groups assembled after marching from the Congress building. And soon, the January 30th student revolt broke out. This became known as the Battle of Mendiola. Soldiers fired at the students. The students retaliated with stones, pillboxes, and Molotov bombs. They commandeered a fire truck and rammed it at the palace gates. Oh, 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 oh,
In the middle of the first quarter storm, people were condemning him and they were saying, you know, he was trying to lead the uh, activist movement away from the mainstream and maybe he was by steadfastly staying there. While the Kabataang Makabayan, Samahang Demokratikong Kabataan and other militant organizations were denouncing imperialism, the NUSP led by Edjop was condemning graft and corruption and warlordism. While the radicals were raising the issues of feudalism and bureaucrat capitalism, Ejop and the moderates were concentrating on issues of nonpartisan con con and the sacadas. But Ejop was a man who was sincere and always willing to learn. <laughs> An incident happened in Ilocosur. This is the burning of uh, Bantay. Actually, two sitios of Barrio Bantay uh, had been burned down by a local political chieftain who had lost in the elections. This was kind of a retaliation. So the barrio had voted against him. He had it burned down. Nang mangyari ang pagsusunog sa sitio ng Ora Este, Ora West sa uh, Ilocosur, Kitang-kita namin ni Ed at ng mga estudyante ang mga sariling hangari ng mga nakaupong politiko sa gobyerno. Ang pangyayari nito ay paglalaban ng dalawang politiko na may kanya-kanyang sariling private armies. Dahil sa pananakot na hinasik ng mga private armies sa taong baryo, nahirapan kaming pagsalitain sila tungkol sa pangyayari. But uh, I still point to that incident as the first time that Egypt had come face to face with the reality of oppression in very real terms. And, and the effect on Egypt was something that left him rather speechless. I remember Egypt being speechless at that time. After the Bantai burning incident came the election of delegates to the Constitutional Convention. Egypt became active in voice or Voters' Organization for Information and Civic Education. He became Secretary General of the Citizens' National Electoral Assembly, or CINEA. Despite the vigilance of the citizenry, there was rampant cheating. Majority of those elected to the Constitutional Convention were traditional politicians. I have come at your behest to express that you may succeed in your noble task. In protest, the NUSP led a demonstration in front of the Manila Hotel, the site of the convention. Symbolic coffins were carried by the rallyists to signify the death of democracy in the Philippines. About a year later, the convention was racked by the Payola scandal. A CONCON delegate exposed large-scale bribery by Malacanang to ensure passage of Marcos-sponsored provisions. In December 1970, Edjop was selected by the Philippine JCs as one of the ten outstanding young men of the Philippines. Two of the other awardees were Senator John Osmeña and Jose Burgos, Jr. Joe Burgos was arrested in 1982 when his newspaper We Forum was closed down. TOIM used to stand for 10 outstanding young men of the Philippines. But in 1970, we were only five selected or awarded by uh, the JCs. And uh, there was mixed reaction on the part of the studentry at that time when Ed Hope was awarded the TOIM trophy the uh, more radical uh, sectors of the students were against uh, the selection of Ed Hope. 
In his speech, Ed Job appealed for unity. He said, solutions to our problems may divide us, but this should never override the unifying need for these solutions. It is this need that unites us in the student movement. It is this need that unites us ultimately with the other progressive sectors in our society. Edjop continued to seek reforms to improve Philippine conditions. He was earnestly searching for the direction the student movement should pursue. He tried to learn from the experience of other countries. When the People's Republic of China opened its doors, Ed Job led a student delegation in 1972. Nagkasama kami sa China, yung first NUSP Goodwill Tour to China. Uh, doon nakita ko yung effect kay Edgar malaki. Dahil uh, para siyang bata na gustong matutunan lahat kaagad lahat. Ang tungkol sa China eh samantalang we had a chance to meet in Peking at that time. Once together with the whole delegation he was leading and we discussed the situation in China, the changes that we saw in China, socially, politically, economically, the various changes that had occurred in Chinese society. Another time, we had a meeting just edge up and myself and we talked about the philippine situation his mind was turning to approaches to achieving basic changes in philippine society that would not be constrained by the constitutional convention that would not be constrained by reformism that would not be constrained by the parliamentary struggle and at that time he told me of his plans to join the PAFLU and to be able a trade union and to be able to integrate with the workers. That was the last time I met Ejop and the last time actually I heard of him because a few months after martial law was declared in the Philippines. But events would soon force Ejop to choose and to choose quickly. Philippine society was in deep economic and political crisis. Marcos suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus in 1971 did not arrest the growth of the people's protest movement. In the meantime, Marcos principal supporter, the United States government, was becoming worried over the growing nationalist sentiment among the Filipinos. Marcos himself was aware that his term of office would end in 1972 and he was barred from running again. Marcos had to hatch a well-orchestrated plot. The military drummed up the anti-communist hysteria. In July 1972, the communists allegedly tried to smuggle arms into the country. The series of bombings in Metro Manila was blamed on the communists. The communists allegedly attempted to assassinate Defense Secretary Juan Ponce Enrile. And to save the Republic from the imaginary communist threat, Marcos put the whole country under martial law on September 21, 1972. Every political dissenter was considered a subversive, a communist, and was arrested. Senator Benigno Aquino Jr. became the most famous of the political detainees. Congress was abolished. Broadcast stations and newspaper offices were closed down. Militant student organizations were declared illegal. Their leaders who escaped arrest went underground. The U.S.-sponsored Marcos dictatorship was born. Recalling the events of 1972, Edjop had this to say in 1980. <laughs> 
sa iba't ibang paraan, doon sa mga direktang na pangungunuhan ng revolusyonaryong kilusan, marami naghawak ng arma. Labas sa direktang pinamumunuhan o tuwi ng pinamumunuhan ng revolusyonaryong kilusan, manasabi natin ang isang malaking pinakitang paglaban ay doon sa Mindanao, kung saan ang Maumayang Moro ay uh, tumiklap sa pag-alsa at sa pakikipag, uh, paglulunsas na pakikipigmang gerilya sa Mindanao, sa gitna at sa uh, Timog Kandurang Mindanao. May kalayaan ba kung bayan ay may kapun sa pamay? Kung ang katotohanan at katarun ay Nang nagtatanggol ay pinarurusahan at minuusin Huwag sadyang huwa ng kalayaan kung ang bayan ay ganyan It was uh, one afternoon from his low, sta low school studies when he barged into the rooms and uh, threw all his books into the bed Sabi namin, bakit ka nagkakaganyan? Ang sagot naman niya, well, uh, law school is bullshit. Sabi namin, bakit? At about this time, Ed Jorp was already involved in the trade union movement while he was taking up law at the University of the Philippines. Eh dahil sabi niya, ang batas naman na pinag-aaralan pinag namin, hindi naman batas ng, ng lahat ng ano eh, lahat ng Pilipino, batas lang yan ang mayaman. Sabi namin, bakit nagkakaganoon? Eh sabi niya, they, ang, the law de defends, the, defends the rich but not the poor. Ngayon, uh, uh, kalilipas pa lang ng uh, mga ilang linggo nung umiral yung batas militar, ay nagpawelga si Ejop sa Apple Sidra. Ito sa is kasaysayan ng unionismo sa Pilipinas ay ang unang welga na naganap sa ilalim ng batas militar. Noon pa mang magkakasama kami sa PAFLU, naibubukas na ni Ed sa amin yung ilang mga pampolitikang ideya niya. Nabanggit niya noon na seryoso niyang pinag-aaralan kung wasto pa ba yung mabderatong pampolitikang paninindigang the, Tinataguyod niya mula pa nung nasa NUSP siya. Binabagabag siya ng karanasan niya sa Oreste, sa Concon Payola Scandal, ng mismong pagpataw ng batas militar, at ng araw-araw na karanasang naiipon niya sa pag-oaganisa sa mga manggagawa. Pinabubulaan ng pawa ng mga karanasan na to, ang kanyang paniniwala na makakamit sa pamamagitan ng pagbabago ng pagre-reforma ano, sa loob ng sistema ang isang makabuluhang pagtataguyod sa interes ng masang magsasaka at manggagawa. Unti-unti nakikita niya yung lohika at wisdom ng revolusyonaryong pagbabagong ibinabandila ng mga radikal na katunggali niya noon sa politika. Repression of political activists and suspected mass supporters continued. In fact, military agents visited Edjop at home. Uh, tinanong ko si Edjar kung anong uh, nangyari. Well, he said, Daddy, kinukumbida ako ng mga militar na mag-cooperate sa kanila. Sabi ko, in what way? What kind of cooperation? Sabi nila, gusto nila magpagtuturo ko yung mga kasamahan ni nila sa student days. Well, he said, kung gusto nila hulihin, hulihin nila, but uh, they should not make me an instrument. At daddy sabi niya, mabuti pa sabi niya, magpaalam na ako dito sa bahay, ayaw ko na itong mag ano, dito, umuwi. Dahil uh, min, sinabihan nila ako na kung hindi ako mag-cooperate sa kanila, they will issue an order for him to be detained. 
Sabi niya daddy, kung i-detain ako, uh, well, you can never tell that na uh, kung hindi ako mag-cooperate, uh, sakta nila ako. O hindi lang sa nasaktan, pagka pwede pa nila ako patayin. Edjok moved to a small apartment rented by fellow activists. Later, he stayed with several workers' families. The workers' living conditions were very different from that of his own family. This left a deep impression on Edjop. Edjop was now a full-time trade union organizer. One of his accomplishments was the dismantling of the Yellow Union in Gelmart. In the garment industry, Gelmart had the largest union. It had 10,000 members. He helped form Gatcord, a federation of garment, textile, and cordage workers. Atangga sa ngayon kami mga manggagawa, naniniwala na hindi maaari kaming mabuhay at magbago ang lipunan sa konting reforma lang. Kinakailangan ganap na pagbabago. At sinabi nga niya sa akin na alam ko yung kapilising na talaga kinakailangan ng ganap na pagbabago. Kaya't ako'y naririto sa piling ng mga manggagawa upang makiisa at tumulong upang maitaas ang moral at ang uh, itinatawag na kalagayan ng mga manggagawa, lalo na sa tinatawag na pag-uunyon. I have always admired Ed's simplicity and humility, his deep sense of service, his intelligence, and his leadership qualities. In the beginning, I had misgivings about how we can go through married life when he was so deeply involved in his service to the people. Later, I would resolve this when I started to realize that Ed was just being more Christian than I was. Ed and Joy were married January 26, 1974 at the San Jose uh, Parish uh, Church in Abotas. Uh, he, he was then working with the labor union. Being an only son, we wanted to give him a grand uh, wedding and uh, with a grand reception. But he preferred to have a very simple and early afternoon wedding. Ejop even insisted on a worker as the principal sponsor in his wedding. Talagang totoo, dito niya sinabi sa akin na ako eh, gagawin niyang ninong. Pero ang totoo, nung primero talagang tinanggihan ko sapagkat kilala ko nga siyang mayaman na noon. Ay ayoko ka ako, naku puta, baka ako eh, medyo masyado namang jahay na sa inyo. Alam ko namang mayaman kayo pagkatapos si ninong, ninong ako. Eh talaga ako hindi tama yun eh. Ngayon sabi sa akin, eh ako hindi makakasal pag hindi mo ako, gina pag hindi mo ako ginawang inaanak. The workers struggle intensified. Edjop met some of his former classmates and acquaintances. They worked with church people in helping the workers' movement. We were classmates in college, although we hardly knew each other then. We met again in 74 when uh, we were setting up the church labor center. I was working with the major religious superiors, and uh, he had been working with uh, PAFLU, the trade union federation, for some time. It was during the time of the CLC that the strike movement restarted since after martial law imposition. Ed's commitment to people was principal. Later, it had to be defined more sharply politically, aligned with specific political organizations or parties. But underlying all that is a more fundamental and therefore broader and more open commitment to the people as a whole, given their existing level of consciousness, their various levels of organizations. Ed Job's deeper involvement in mass struggle led him to the underground movement. The revolutionary forces fighting the U.S.-backed Marcos dictatorship through armed struggle. Una kami nagkita ni Ejop eh, noong uh, 1975 sa isang uh, liblib na lugar sa Pampanga. Ito eh, dumating siya sa lugar ko noon eh, umuulan at uh, nung magkatagpo kami, 
siya at makilala niya na ako si Kadante at makita niya yung mga mandirig maroon, siya ay uh, tuwan-tuwa at pinagyayakap niya kami. At uh, ayun, eh, sa kwentuhan namin, eh, napakahilig niyang uh, magtanong tungkol sa, tungkol sa mamamayan sa baryo, tungkol sa reforma sa lupa, tungkol sa mga karanasan namin sa ukbo. At uh, nagpahayag siya na, no, na nais niyang uh, sumali sa ukbong bayan. At kami naman eh, dahil sa uh, sabik kami sa mga gayong mga kasama na may, may talino, eh tuwan-tuwa kami. At uh, sinabi namin na uh, bukas na bukas kami sa pagtanggap sa kanya. At uh, ayun, eh, sumama siya ng ilang araw siguro. Kasama namin sa paglalakad sa sa mga bukid, sa mga tubuhan, at sa, sa pagtawid sa mga ilog. Isang napapansin ko sa kanya, eh, bagamat uh, parang siya uh, sanay sa Maynila, hindi sanay sa, sa hirap. No? Dahil nakita ko yung balat niya, eh, ma, ano, ma, uh, makinis. Pero kung magdaan kami sa talahe, ba't siya putikan, eh, wala siyang ingat. Kung minsan eh, madaan kami sa malalim na putikan at taapak siya doon, eh, sabi ko, eh, eh, iwasan mo yan, eh, mababaong ka dyan, eh, sagot ba naman sa akin, eh, eh, katatakutan mo yan, eh, kung sa kawe, di yung matakot, sa putik pa, sige, apak siya sa putik, ha. The movement was in need of the skills of uh, Ed Job, but uh, Ed Job at that time wanted to go to the countryside to join the New People's Army. I convinced him to do work for the National Democratic Front, specifically to do urban, urban work. When I defected, at that time it was Ed who uh, received me, and then we went together to go up to the countryside, and he, he, we went around and he introduced me to a lot of the groups they were working with in the barrios. Upon meeting Ed Job, I learned um, more thoroughly about the National Democratic Front. Uh, this is the broad coalition of all revolutionary forces that uh, are fighting against uh, the dictatorship in trying to establish a more popular democratic and nationalist order. His friends and comrades have vivid and fond memories of Ed Job. At times pushy. Uh, times aggressive, but always very hardworking and responsible. Um, there was one time we played basketball in Baguio, and although he was small, he grabbed most of the rebounds. He out uh, pushed all of us. He wouldn't go out of his way to make trouble. He was just a happy-go-lucky guy. But once you got him into a corner, watch out, he would fight back. Even though he was short, he had guts. He had guts. He was often uh, teased about his size, but he was very proud that uh, he was one inch taller than Deng Xiaoping. <laughs> He's really very businesslike, and that's, I think it's one attribute he gets from his own upbringing and his class. But he is also very, you know, uh, warm-hearted and, uh, and uh, very concerned, as, as good uh, and a very clear vision of what he wants and what he wants realized, where he wants to go to. For one, he was, well, most of the time serious, no? But uh, I remember certain situations where, you know, after a very tense meeting or uh, serious confrontations or debates with other groups, or other individuals, we would uh, usually retire, you know, in his room, in his house, and assess things, discuss situations, and it is there where, you know, he would uh, uh, simply be himself, he would relax, and I remember one of his outlets for relaxation would be to sing, you know, in his deep baritone voice. In defiance of Marcos' dictatorial rule, 
the urban poor put up barricades to resist demolition in 1975. The workers defied the strike ban and struck in 1976. The students boycotted their classes to oppose the tuition fee hike in 1977. The terror effect of martial law was gradually vanishing in the face of the people's might. Marcos had to deodorize his regime. He foisted upon the people the so-called policy of normalization. Ejop had this to say. The Interim National Assembly or IBP election was called in 1978. A coalition of anti-fascist and nationalist political forces fielded candidates. The most popular candidate, of course, was Ninoy Aquino, who was still in prison. There was massive fraud in the IBP elections. Imelda Marcos topped the winners. Ninoy Aquino and the other opposition candidates lost by ridiculous margins. The candidates identified as militants were ordered arrested. <laughs> Due to the dictatorship's own actions, its policy of normalization failed. There was no let-up in the repression of people's liberties. One of the victims of arrests was Ed Job himself. On June 14, 1979, together with six others, Ed Job was arrested in an early morning raid in Las Piñas, Metro Manila. His son, Nonoy, four years old, was with him. Nakita kong tinututukan sila ng barel at linalagyan ng mga posas. Ta pagkatapos nun, dinala kami sa Camp Karame. Linagyan ng takip sa mata ang tatay ko at binugbog. When I saw him, he was blindfolded and handcuffed. It was my feeling was could not be described uh, after uh, having seen my son in handcuffs I, I could not uh, I was uh, I could not speak <laughs> Laban sa mga gahaman, mga tagumpay ng kilusan sa buong daigdigan. Alam mo, Nonoy, <coughs> ang kantang yan, ano eh. Nung inano ako ng kaaway, <coughs> nung pinahirapan ako ng kaaway sa loob, 
Sinuntok nila tapos kinulong sa kwartong madilim tapos tinali. Kinakanta ko lang yan para hindi nila ako matakot. At hindi naman ako natakot sa kanila. Yan ang nakakatulong din kung alam natin yung mga kanta ng Masay. Nakabigay sa atin ang tapang at lakas ng loob. Edjop was heavily tortured. But his torturers were not completely delighted. Edjop did not say anything. Neither did his comrades and co-detainees. As the military would later find out, their prize catch would never be in captivity for long. At dawn of June 24, 1979, Edjop escaped to freedom. He wrote an open letter describing how he and his companions were tortured. He named and described his interrogators and some of his torturers. His comrades in Central Luzon welcomed him. He traveled in the different guerrilla fronts of Central Luzon until he was deployed to Mindanao. Pagdating namin sa Mindanao, agad na nakausap na yung tagapangulo ng Mindanao at hinupuan agad namin yung unang meeting na tagubili ng Komite Sentral yung pagbubuo ng Territorial Commission sa Mindanao. Uh, dito pinag-usapan namin yung mga atas na ibinigay ng Komite Sentral sa Commission at pinaghati-hatian na rin namin yung gawain. Ang nakaatas sa kanya na gawain ay yung pagsagawa ng PSI at yung pagtingin sa kalagayan ng urban development ng Minda. The PSI or Preliminary Social Investigation Document describes the economic, political, cultural and military situation in Mindanao. It also includes a brief history of the revolutionary movement there. This is considered one of Edjop's principal contributions to the people's struggle in Mindanao. Malaki na itulong niya sa halimbawa sa strategic political leadership na kung saan nasistematize yung mga gawain at nabigyan ng tamang direksyon yung pagsulong ng Minda. Isang naging magandang halimbawa sa amin no, kung paano humarap ng mga gawain. Uh, sa question ng mga writings, readings, tsaka mga pag-aaral, uh, isa, isa siya dito sa sasabi kong parang nangungunang mga kasama na may kakayahan at mahusay sa mga ganito. Uh, sumali siya sa training, sumama siya sa mga maneuvers ng training. At sa kanyang pagsasama sa training, medyo dahil hindi siya sanay sa kilos ng katulad ng mga magsasaka na medyo mabilis. Medyo nasugatan siya ng konti sa obstacle course na binigay namin. Life in the revolution is not easy. Difficulties and obstacles are not merely physical. I saw him once looking pensively at Nonoy uh, playing in the, in the lawn, patumbling-tumbling si Nonoy. And then I was looking out the window also. I asked him, Pare, uh, hindi mo ba namimiss yung mga bata mo? Mga anak? Wala sila? Siyempre naman, ikaw naman pare. Siyempre, tatay gita. Ed and I often talked about our children at length, our longings for them, our hopes of being reunited with them. We encouraged our children to visit us whenever possible. And while they're with us, we try to make them understand our work and why they are separated from us. On occasions, we send them letters, small gifts and souvenirs from the masses, from the comrades, and the places we visit in our work. We also send them tapes, like one time when it was Nonay's birthday. Kami dito ni Nanay, na probinsya ito, pero ibang probinsya na kesa do sa pinuntahan mo noon. Lumipat kasi kami. Pero dito, marami rin tayong kaibigan. Yung mga mahihirap ba, yung masa, yung karaniwang tao, mabait sila sa atin. 
pinibigyan tayong pagkain, tinutulungan tayo, umot, unan, tapos pwede tayong tumira sa kanila. Kaya uh, pagkapunta ka rito, makapakilala ka rin namin sa kanila. Dito rin si Tats, magkakantahan ka ng ano eh. <laughs> <laughs> yung favorite mong karaniwang tao. Gusto mo yan, di ba? Ah, sige, ito ha. <laughs> karaniwang tao ang nagiging kawal Mga magsasaka na karetong tangan Mga manggagawa na walang sandata kundi yung bisig lamang Mga taong pinangatang buka Mga kulang palad at mga kawawan Kawaning maliit, sudyante at walang hanap buhay Gayong walang yaman, sukat ipagtanggol Walang bagari ni sinong ang bubong Ay buklod, kumilos, ay gandang masawi sa pagsasanggalang sa sariling balayan. Ang lati pong lakas, naging kaguhan, ang lati ay wala. Manding ay nanggaling sa kailaliman ng matamang lupa at nagling nagangkin ng kaluluwat buhay na kahangangan. Matuling kapalat na tulad ng maha Nine thirty in the evening, September twenty, nineteen eighty-two. Philippine constabulary operatives raided a bungalow at the Skyline subdivision in Matina, Davao City. Four arrested, one dead. So, ang nangyari noon, sumilip ako doon sa ano? Sumilip ako doon sa sa pintuan ng kwarto. Tapos nakita ko na paalis na, pa, pa, na sumisilip si, ano, si Edjup doon sa window. Tapos pa, nag-ano siya, na, uh, nag, uh, patakbo siyang paano, patakbo siyang papunta dito sa kabilang, sa kabilang pintuan, papunta sa kitchen. Tapos nakita niya ako, sabi niya, raid, 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 raid. So parang ang nangyari kasi noon sa akin, ano, yung... Parang nag-numb yung lahat ng ano ko ba, yung, yung hindi ko alam pa anong gagawin ko kasi yung dating deta na detain ako, bagong release, tapos yung husband ko na bagong, bagong escape. So parang hinahanap ako ng ano, ng mga military authorities, tapos ngayon raid na naman. Sinabi sa akin ng medical legal na si Idyar uh, may siyam na tama sa katawan at lahat all those uh, no all those the, all his wounds were all fatal uh, parang uh, sumama ang loob ko dahil sabi ko eh, isang punla lang patay na si Ijar bakit inano pa nila uh, dinagdagan pa nila ng mm, sugat si Ijar at malapit pa naman na walang dahilan na hindi matatamaan si Ijar Nung nabalitaan namin na namatay na siya at pinagahanda nila ako ng damit parang iuwi na ang kanyang banggay sa galing sa Dabao nga, eh, nung hinahanda ko ang damit niya, naalala ko nung, nung una na parati niya, parati niya akong pinahahanda ng damit niya kung saan pumupunta kaya naiiyak ako doon, nagiiyak ako. Tapos nung ang dumating, ano, nalulungkot din ako dahil umuwi nga siya rito, doon ko na nang huling nakita pero patay na. Uh, the effect of the death, well I guess it, how does one put it, uh, shock? Shame, shame, I think shame. I think shame more than shock that this man you had grown up with had taken that step. And uh, here you were, you were alive and not doing very much and uh, afraid to 
to to speak out. Uh, some people would say he's a hero. Some people will say, no, uh, these people acted against the national interests. It's very hard to make those judgments. They have to be made many, many years after it all occurred. My own feeling is that, yes, anyone who follows through and dies for what they believe in, especially if it's uh, for the benefit of the nation, I think that person deserves to be called a hero. Ed Job, I believe, made an impact on his peers, and uh, I think he has left his mark on the Ateneo, particularly with his death, the type of death that he died. Um, and I want the Ateneans of today and the Ateneans of tomorrow to always remember Ejab, a man who became a, a man for others. He died for his convictions. A person who I believe um, symbolizes the anguish that many of our young people experience today. Former Senator Jose Diocno spoke at the Necrological Services held at the University of the Philippines Chapel. He said, We are not gathered here to mourn him. We should mourn for ourselves and a society which has made it necessary for a young man like Edjob to give up his life. Naalala ko ang sinabi ni Ed na magpakatatag dahil sa ang kanyang ipinaglalaban ay para sa bayan. Bilang isang ina, inaalay ko ang kanyang kamatayan para sa bayan. Sa pagkamatay ni tatay ay malungkot dahil wala na akong isang tatay na mabayat. Sa pagkilang panig ay pinagmamalaki ko din na nagkaroon akong ganong asing tatay at namatay siya para sa maraming tao at nagbibigay siya ng magandang halimbawa sa mga kabataan na katulad ko. I feel very sad for our children. Not just because they've lost their father too early in their lives, but more for their lost opportunity to know, to experience, and to grow with such a good person as their father. As days passed and the realization of my husband's death started to dawn on me, I could feel my whole body weakening. What gave me renewed strength was the fact that although I may have lost him physically, he is still very much alive in the people who have taken up the struggle where he left off.